And we didn't miss anything, as there are no proxies. Great, in the top right of Alcyone, it is Scarlet. And in the bottom left, we do have Special. Oof. Scarlet just barely losing out in one of the tensest, is that the word? Best of fives. TVZ. And then Nut is just forced to play a second one <laughs> back to back, but is super eager to do so. I mean, these guys vetoed in like a minute. And there's, well, less server confusion, but still, they were so eager to get into this game. Special's been waiting in this lower bracket for that series to finish. So that's why he would be eager. But Scarlet, I would have figured one of that at least a two minute break or something. Hardly even got that. But now, up against a very, uh, well, I'm not actually going to say all that different. I, I do still think there's differences between Special and Gumiho that would require you to restructure your thinking on how you want to take this game. But actually, as far as their uh, proclivity for mech and odd builds and the occasional uh, you know, cheesiness, like I think they're kind of similar, if not really quite similar. Um, I think it might be a bit more of the difference of, of what builds they have in their build order notebook as well as the choices they make as far as the mid and late game styles go and decision making. You know, I still think we have some differences and just frankly the fact that Special is a, a America's player. North America, he is in Mexico. And um, Gumio is Korean. But Special is, you know, one of the more Korean-esque North Americans that we do have. So the proxy second barracks is kind of cute here, but definitely a surprise. Scarlet was thinking as soon as she scouted the forward barracks, that was it, that was it. You know, this is actually what Gumiho was doing to her on the exact map, a forward barracks. And then into the two fact that it didn't work out. But the second barracks being proxied, little cheeky cheek, little faster, multiple reaper harassment. Could have grabbed, I think, a drone or two. Instead, grabbed four lings. Scarlet did not skimp on the lings like some other build openers will do. And to be fair, four lings, two larva, could have been two drone. <laughs> so it's like, well... But still, with three Reapers and no speed, you can definitely get more drone damage. And that's exactly what's happening here. Finally, one does go down. No second, though. And the Barracks just actually providing some sight and perhaps misclick potential. The barracks lifted in Brood War actually has huge misclick potential. But not so much in StarCraft 2. These Reapers are getting a lot of carnage, getting a lot of chaos. But their actual direct damage is starting to... Get a little limited. There we go. All three Reapers, in fact, going down. Despite speed not having quite finished. It was like literally at the last second there. They just got corralled. And Special's opening aggression is finally over. Swapping over into now some factory units. Not just right into Hellenes. Right into some of these Cyclones. This has been a build, but I would say that we did see it off of the usual two racks on the forward position. This is also quite cute. Um... Gumiho also does do it off of that single barracks opener. And this is kind of actually, it, it's very close to what Gumiho did in game one versus Scarlet, except it's going to be bio, so never mind. But I was thinking as far as the early game Reaper aggression into the Cyclone follow up, that's where my mind was headed. But Scarlet just got a scout on what exactly was going down, and that's very unlikely to be a fake. So it is going to be bio. Still a couple of Cyclones and Hellions to be a bother. Third CC finishes up for special. Scarlet's having taken very little on the drone damage. I'd say overall dealt with that opener well. Especially considering how many other Terrans would have wanted to even maybe save those free Reapers. And if they did end up sacrificing themselves, maybe hoping that it was a sacrifice for four or five drones total. So, yeah. Scarlet may disagree, but I've certainly seen worse on the defense. Roaches is going to be the player from Scarlet, who I'm pretty sure believes that stem, but you know, she hasn't, especially because she hasn't rechecked. I actually think she's taking it at face value. I think she is just playing into Roaches because she would like to in this map on this game versus special. Whatever reason. And more power to her. Starport on the way now for special as he decides not to go for reactor and then does go for reactor. Is that what I saw there? Maybe just a misclick. 
Uh, if, now, if there was a canceled reactor into Tech Lab, that would be good for special. As you do want to produce tanks against a Roach player. Even if they might not be truly intending on Roach all linning you, tanks are still the easier defensive tool if the Roach player goes, Oh, hey, you don't have a lot. Let me just go ahead and kill you. It's going to be a swap initially anyway for the Starport, so we're not quite at that time in which we're worried. It'd be if the factory made another reactor, that I'd be a little worried, because Special has no idea that this is his opponent's plan. Let's go into Roaches. Now, they might appear eventually. I don't think they've shown themselves. But Scarlet, unbeknownst to her, could probably get away with hiding them even longer. Not really. Not really her plan. She's definitely not trying to hide them. And the Roach Warren's not trying to be hidden either. It's just sometimes, especially if they get dark, he does go for the Roach Warren in the back. And then... Depending on how the game goes, he has even hidden the roaches. Not just him, of course, other Zergs have. But this is kind of on the nose. They will eventually reveal themselves, and Special will go, oh shit, and then build tanks. <laughs> that scan has revealed them. He was on a tech lab, so that's good news. And that's a very forward place factory. If this was a one run roach all in, I'd be quite scared about that factory placement. It is not looking like a one one roach all in, as the infestation pit's already been thrown down. Did the scan see that? No, it did not. So I, I would still be very scared of special. <laughs> and the infestation pit does not totally subtract any and all possibilities of aggression from the Zerg. It just you know, kind of deters them from it. That's investment into not building up the perfect army. Usually accompanied by 2-2 two, two upgrades, more drones, and a hive. So that's a lot of investment there. Uh, Ling just scouted the fourth base on location. That's all it takes to delay a fourth base on location. Just one little Ling. Hopefully it doesn't get a cancel. <laughs> it will not. Three infestors, look at these splits. Great defenders. Making sure that the Roach army, while not maxed, does not get overwhelmed. Which really isn't a problem here. It is also going to add to your perfect army. Scarlet hasn't really felt the need to make Ravagers, so she's not been aggressive, and there's no way that an attack's incoming that's particularly problematic, because that fourth CC is canceled. I, I was confused, but I, I think I, I, I understand why. So not because he's expecting an all-lane, although he might have been a little suspicious, because Special, again, had no idea about the Infestation Pit. You know, seeing a lack of army and no Ravagers, that could be building elsewhere. So that did look like a... I've lost control of the map, because he just lost the drop, the push-out, and I haven't checked to confirm it is not an all-in cancel fourth base which it is a bummer because that probably could have been defended but I, I think that is usually a wise choice right so it just it just kind of sucks for special who now is a little more aware of what his opponent is doing he's looking to try and bring on the aggression the tanks sieged up do help out a lot a couple of the fungals were juicy but you know, not perfect and this will be a push from Special, though just losing those two tanks across the bottles always stings. It looks like it's also going to be helped out by a drop on the right side. Couple of queens looking to defend, but only so many transfuses. Special forced to totally evacuate from the front lines. Manages to do so in the medivacs. I think he lost a third tank. Oh no, saved it. But this drop did go ham. This drop killed three queens as well as eight drones, so that was very effective for a medivac and eight marines. And more importantly, most importantly, I suppose, there's also the survival of the main army. Because that could have killed what it did. And then Special could have still been on the back foot defensively, barely holding. Now he just you know, gets back up in the middle of the map, sieges up all Gucci. Scarlet does have a hive, could be working on Vipers. Currently just working on rebuilding the army, getting maxed out, which he now is. Also making sure that maxed out situation has more and more Ravagers. Special has 2-2 two, two up against 1-1 one, one with plus 3 attack already started. So in a fine position there for the upgrades. And a 4th command center finally ready to truly take its location as a planetary. A little tug of war going on in the middle of the map has not been won by anyone as of yet. Eventually some old man will tell them all to you know, let go and then heave and maybe they'll win then. But a squid game reference. Uh, but it's not happened yet. Big fungal on top of the Medivex, who are disturbingly out of juice. Special on four bases, getting to that nice late game production. Might eventually add on Caduceus Reactor, but it's not an upgrade that people are 
gunning towards as of yet. I do feel like against particularly Roach, Ravager, and Fester that it's worth actually, again, like kind of gunning towards. It's, it's a bit awkward though because it's a Starport upgrade. I get, is it, it was a Fusion Core upgrade. Okay, someone tell me what it is. Because if it's a Fusion Core upgrade, I could actually see that being something that you literally try and get to in this game. Is all that sustained damage I discussed in the last series. Medivac energy is, is, a, is a real problem for this, but eh, I don't know. Anyways, the theory of crafting aside, Special did finally kind of, uh, you know, get let go of the middle of the map. Tried to defend the fourth base, but now the third is under some significant pressure. Lings and Roaches taking down a lot of supply depots. That will be nasty eventually. Special did have a couple of his own drops on the side of the map, and that double drop on the right side could do a lot of damage. Now the army of Scarlet, a little dispersed too. That turns perhaps a little awkward, but she realizes, regroups, and will conquer this fight, forcing Special back. But it is a little all over the place on both sides, so it looks like a bit of a wash. Special coming out with a slight supply lead, but his third base still being ransacked. Scarlet actually not able to save her fourth base. That is problematic. I believe those are fifth, sorry. Her fourth is now under attack. But Special, whew, barely picking up in time. Does now have control over the game with all these drops, continuing to keep Scarlet on the back foot. Scarlet finally able to get the larva there to actually pop back up to max out supply. This time with a Fester and a couple of Vipers too, getting a Parasitic Bomb, but more drones go down. And that is something that Scarlet might want to replace. Yeah, about five on the way. Doesn't have to replace all of them. Now she has a superior, very superior army supply because Special did not save those drops. He lost the one to the left and the one in the main and also lost some army in the middle with that whole kerfuffle. And has not been able to remax. The supply depots that were killed earlier on significantly hindering Special's remax potential to a really disturbing point. More so than anything else in this game, I think that might be what kills the guy. Scarlet might be running in here expecting a serious opposition and then realizing, oh wait, that's actually not that much? Hold on, what's going on? And it is because Special has been supply blocks for so long that he hasn't been able to use what, what at one point was 1,400 minerals. And now getting it below a thousand, but still not close to maxed. It looks like Scarlet's not willing to actually push the issue, unaware of how many tanks are on that high ground, how much Sim City she's gonna have to push past, and so wary of the drops, which do come back in. So special will get the time to remax. There we go. Now if officially using all of the bank. Also on a double factory, Ghost Academy now done. And the upgrades finishing up, having cluster attack finish at some point. I don't know when. Everything seems to calm down for a second. Scarlet still has a much bigger bank than her opponent. But is up against that dastardly plus three attack. Ghosts are on the way, which uh, is not something she actually had to deal with versus Gumiho. Might be like, oh shit, that's right. <laughs> they have a unit that does that. And not just EMPs, the infestors, which could be great and all, but rather I'm thinking snipes. This will further punish any time that Scarlet over aggresses and then is forced to retreat. A drop once again from Special. He is relentless with this and they are rewarding. They're, they're, they're doing pretty well. Like, except for the double drop that got cleaned up in one instance combined with the supply block. Special's drops have been very good. It was just that one that was a bit sketch. The rest of them have been worth it basically every single time, either in the direct damage or indirect, like pulling the army back. Special does have a very solid position defensively with the high ground tanks, decent number of them too, so he feels comfortable letting three medivac drops worth of units over to the right side. On top of that gold base, Scarlet a little out of position, not totally and entirely, but too much to actually save the hatchery. That might cost a couple of units. Parasitic bomb number two. Can they unload? No, they cannot. So that is quite a few units. Special is also trying to micro that drop back in the naturals. That also might have been what he was paying attention to. At this time around, not a significant loss of life combined with a deficit of, a, of an earlier battle in a supply block. So yeah, that's a decent chunk of change, but Special is able to afford it. Back up to Remax. Two more starports on the way, the building upgrades on the way, plus two tank attack too, I like to see. A total of nine tanks, that's actually a really almost perfect number. As we move over into a little bit more of that defensive turtle Terran, that's a big blob of Terran that I don't think you're supposed to be. What the fuck are you doing, guys? Ah, what are you doing? Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Really? That entire army? Okay, apparently it was on purpose. I feel like this is incredibly dangerous. That's one medivac. I don't know. 
I don't know, man. I don't know. No, oh, kind of splitting is done, but that ultra just got sniped. And this army, with its superior upgrades, will manage to take a decent fight. Viper's also running over the Marines exactly what Special wanted, and that looked like a mistake, and it apparently absolutely 100% was not. More drones going down. Scarlet has lost so many in this game. 76 and counting drones have gone down. So many hatcheries, too, as we have a double whammy right after the gold base was taken. Scarlet does have the bank to replenish everything she just uh, lost right there. And she just needs some time. But, whew! That was a one, two, three, four, five, six jabs to the face, real quick like. The special still has those tanks back at home with a couple of ghosts in case Scarlet gets the wrong idea and thinks that she can be on the counter offensive. I love that the plus one ship weapons is now on the way as we do have a. Move over into uh, Liberators. Liberators, Fusion Core for the range, and then ideally for that Caduceus Reactor. Although the Medivac energy has not been the issue in quite some time. It's not been the sustained tug of war back and forth, back and forth that drains Medivac energy. It's been a little more of the stay at home play and drops. Now Special is moving out with a full army, Medivacs and tanks included. Scarlet has added in five Ultras with both of their upgrades, too, so they're definitely a little bit feistier than the lone one earlier on. She also has rebuilt those hatcheries, building some SAG defense, at least give her some time to respond, which is better than previous attempts. And a Greater Spire is on the way, too. We'll see if that comes into effect as Scarlet takes the battle in the middle of the map. One great fungal on top of the Medivacs, but they are alive and they will pick up what they can, which unfortunately for Special, is not as much as you would want, and now having to unload in the midst of battle. Some ghosts still available, go for the snipes and the ultras. Ultras starting to get depleted, but the Ravagers more so getting depleted. They went up to take care of the two tanks, but actually this, there are so many shots from those tanks that significantly contributed to the fight. Scarlet will end up having to back away and regroup. Nine more ultras is the plan as she tries to carry on with the momentum that she just built up. She's trying to continue forth as she did just kill a good number of ghosts, a good number of tanks, and special. Might even get the wrong idea and think that he can take a forward position. That is absolutely not the case. Scarlet did have a bank, does have a bank, has used said bank to build so many more units. Lickety split and special does not have the same defensive setup when he's out here trying to get this gold base. Where are the tanks? Where are the snipes? They're running away. That's what they are. Liberator's not sieged up either and special supply might look okay right now, but I am worried for the future. Blinding Cloud comes down, but the snipe did go through. Will Scarlet have enough past that? She just might have a Link Flood was coming in, but no Link Flood inside. The Ultra's actually even getting lazy! Lazy cows! You bastards! And she will be forced to run away as the tanks on siege with the snipes, with the Liberator reinforcements. Will finally draw the line in the sand. That special was missing, and the Scarlet even thinks that she can go back under. She actually cannot. Just takes the care... Uh, takes the opportunity to grab a Liberator. Oh no, Special not paying attention for a hot second, was queuing up, I believe, Liberator Harassment, but the tanks are siege, the libs are siege, and the army was eventually pulled back. Only Ultras also is rather easy for a Terran player to micro against, but only if they have the supply. And it looks like Special, too disjointed, too dispersed, too all over the place, and too overrun, doesn't have the supply to get those snipes in. And by snipes, I mean the literal ghost snipes, but then also just the bulking up of Marauders. Doesn't even have that opportunity. Special supply now too much in the gutter, having lost access to the gold base. And Scarlet will win. The remaxing after remax after remax is going to be too much. Another 20 minute here for Scarlet. 20 minute game, which she, she's definitely winning at this point. Things are going to get easier and she can I guess, take a little bit of a rest, kind of, but... I'd be surprised if she wasn't at least a little bothered by Terran's tenacity at this point. Special not one to give up easily, especially as long as the Liberators don't have a direct response. But Special really... I, I don't know if he strictly needed the gold base at the time in which he tried to take it. That did seem a little overzealous. And not in a way that is excused by, my, by necessity, I suppose. But... You know, obviously trying to keep up with the expansions is a primary goal of StarCraft. But at this point, yeah, absolutely needs the base. <laughs> 100%. But even farther away from getting it.
Another drop from Special finally comes in. Yeah, that was kind of the... the there was a notable uh, calming down of the game. And then in that calming down phase, we also had less drops. Scarlet took a lot of damage to the economy, but without further pressure applied, some type of actually big attack or more drops doing the same amount of damage. It was a blip. There we go, Scarlet up 1-0. It was a blip. It's a, it's a frustrating blip where I think every non-Zerg player in the world kind of gets the feels. You're like, didn't I kill so much? Like, they must not have had that big of a bank. And then you look at the replay and you're like, oh. <laughs> they're playing. <laughs> um. <clears throat> but seriously, there's a... Uh, it's got to be something beyond it. And sometimes it is the main attack. After the economy damage, it does it. Second game will be on Equilibrium. In the top right for the Shopify Rebellions. She is Scarlet. In the top left, sending out a cheeky SEV. We do have Special. Who's current team? I do need to double check. Currently on Psystorm Gaming. No, he's currently teamless, actually. Should also be picked up probably pretty soon. Especially if he gets a Katavito. But anywho. So we have special going for what looks to be a 2-Rex. Yeah, no 30 CV on the way. So a cheeky 2-Rex. Believe it or not, we managed to avoid that exact number of barracks in the last best of five. There was one. There is three. There is proxied. There was at home. There wasn't two. Now there is two. And special is notably proxying both of them this time around. Scarlet's Overlord is headed the exact right direction. She can get a scout on this and then back away to the high ground as well to save the Overlord. Completely normal hatch first, gas, and then pull for her. But that is where most defenses happen. <laughs> Actually took even a little bit longer to realize. But still plenty of time to back away to a safe position is the most important part. So it is a two racks. Uh, you know, she could have intentionally continued with the Overlord to get a confirmation on the lack of third barracks. That would have put the Overlord in a bit of danger, though. So technically she isn't she doesn't know a hundred percent. She'll get a feel for it eventually. And uh, this time, she's not going to just add on an Extractor and a Roachhorn like she had to do versus Gumiho's 3 racks. Uh, it's very possible that she can hold this with a drone pool into Ling and Queen production. Let's check it out! It is going to be a Roachhorn. It is going to be an Extractor. Okay, so choosing that option for the defense. Now, this should absolutely 100% not go into the Marauders in the stem. <laughs> Even if this uh, bunker does succeed in killing the hatchery. <clears throat> A special little gutsy going to the main base, but you basically are doing this to also get a scout. You know, what What are you doing? Why aren't you trying to stop this from happening? Okay, you're going into roaches, gotcha. And then while there are no lings and no queens, you can get one or two drones. That's great. But it's, it's kind of evident, even though technically the scout didn't happen. Oh, it did. I'm blind. It would have been evident anyway. There we go. With the roaches coming out on only a two racks, and a two racks that also just kind of it was like, yep, I did it. I did the thing. I built a bunker, great, and got into a reaper and a little bit of delayed marine production. Factory and command center going up back at home. Oh, on location. Uh, that means that Scarlet absolutely should be able to save her hatchery in the natural. With the two reapers, even sorry, two reapers being made is a real thorn in her side. Two drones go down, the slow lings can't respond, and the roaches aren't numerous. So, you know, defending two places at once is still a bother. The bunker will be salvaged eventually, as the Reapers are currently focused on. The proxy SEVs did apparently go down, so that was the trade there. But Scarlet did lose five drones and had to build roaches. He's going to stop the salvage. That's, that's more special, though, not, not, not realizing, thinking that would have been killed, so not paying attention to it anymore. So obviously the hatchery was saved, the drone damage was done, but the two racks overall, kind of a success, but you know, a success, not a whoa, success. Say so the nicest thing about this is just kind of the way the pacing was set. It was almost a nice, cool, chill, 
hang ten type of two racks. You, know, you did the thing, they did the thing. I killed your drones, you got my bunker, but hey! Because that wasn't really all types of... What's the word? Uh, chaotic. That wasn't all types of explosive. Command center got on location. Coming down before the factory, but it looked a bit too. Uh, nanosecond gas was taken, so... I would say that besides the Reapers getting damage done, and what I, I think is kind of a more awkward situation for the Zerg to be on roaches at this stage in the game. What I really like for special is the on-location command center as fast as it was. There's a lot of other two raxes where you kind of assume that it's going to go to a certain way. So you make sure to defend first. You, you do not get your command center on the low ground because that's really gutsy. You do get the factory first and perhaps even the starport if you're really scared of a counterattack. And then you are not as ahead as you would hope. But this, this is a really good position for special. Who's going to follow this up with some medevac cyclone drop shenanigans, I think. Wait. Oh, medevac marine drop shenanigans. And oh, bringing out the classic fusion core. Woo. They got battlecruisers on the way, guys. I feel like it's been a hot second since I've seen a battlecruiser opener. When was it last time? It's been a while. I don't know how long it's been for Scarlet, which is far more important. Because obviously she knows how to defend against one should she scout it. We have absolutely 100% seen and even heard from the pro gamers themselves in post-game interviews. Them admitting to just being like, yeah, I kind of forgot. <laughs> like, like I, didn't real I didn't remember that was an option. I was scratching my head and then, oh right, shit, that thing or this thing or that. We have absolutely heard that. So, a lot of the times, that's why out of meta stuff works. It's not just because the person doesn't remember how to deal with it, but literally that shock to their system as their brain recalculates how this works can be uh, devastating. Is it Battle Christmas? He moves off the tech lab. Oh, because the Overlord scouted it while well, my excitement is just dead and gone. <laughs> This game sucks. Just kidding. Because the Overlord was on the backside, that was the wrong place with the fusion core. And Special just gives up on it. Uh, good on Scarlet to get the scout, you know, get that Overlord all the way back there for that kind of cheeky scout. But now I guess she doesn't really know if it's going to be the battle cruiser or not. So she does afford three spore crawlers. That's 225 minerals as well as three drones. That's a little bit of a, you know, giggle for, for the Terran. They're like, eh, got something. Ooh, and if the Spire comes down and Corruptors are built, forget about it. Oh my god, Scarlet could have seriously the wrong impression here. Oh my god, she actually absolutely does. She does not, she has no idea what's going on. That one scout was not enough. Oh my god. She has no idea it's mech. Now, she did build roaches. So like, she might be presuming mech because that can often go with a battle cruiser opener too. And that just might be the way that Special plays out this map or something, but... If she builds Corruptors, there's nothing that's gonna be useful for those Corruptors. Please, love God, not build Corruptors. She has no idea. She has no idea about the gases, she has no idea about the factory, she has no idea about the barracks being lifted. All she sees is a, is a, a seven marine drop. All she needs to see is the barracks still being lifted, and that would also tell her. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ow! I am so scared Corruptors are gonna be made. And also, these Hellions getting into a drone line is also nice. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the usual number of Hellions that even a bio, pl bio player would have. Just to get some map control and some defense back at home. I don't know, guys. IDK. Special's grabbing a fourth on location, something that Scarlet also doesn't know about. Her Spire finishes, and thank goodness she does not make a single Fripplin Corruptor, because it would be so useless. Okay, one Corruptor could help with the Medivac drop. You got me. But it would otherwise not be great. She's adding on 1-1 one, one upgrades, an Infestation Pit, Metabolic Boost, and plus one Flyer Attack. And that's not very useful. But I guess it could have been worse. This, this I believe, is the first time she even really realizes what's going on. The Cyclone's appearing on her gold base, getting these lock-ons, killing the hatchery, and probably killing the rest of this army. I mean, they could. Scarlet actually was not reinforcing particularly quickly. But they didn't go after the army. They got their... Cancelled? No, yes, that was a kill hatchery. Skedaddle. And even though Scarlet now gets time to figure out how to how to play from here, you know, it's still special with such a dominant position as far as Terran pacing goes. 
You know, I would say very rarely do they get the jump like that. Do they get the kill on that? They save all the cyclones and they get a fourth up and running as an orbital. You know, like it's it's a very smooth game here for our boy special. Scarlet is trying to also get some infestors, which will be extremely helpful, but they're not out here yet, and more cyclones are a coming. But the barracks still lifted to get some forward scouting as well. That does not look like an approach ravager, especially without their upgrades. Infestors do pop out, but are actually being killed as well. Tanks running up too is going to help anchor this push, and this might be it for Scarlet. Can she tackle the cyclones and tanks together? I don't know that she can. Raven coming in, so you don't have to scan anymore for the creep tumor kills and scarlet i mean she just did not get a good foundation set anti air missile also coming down i think she might be able to clean this up but it's gonna cost so much and special has such a great economy back at home yeah she won't be able to push this back and rallying as a mech player is always a dicey game to play particularly bad if you end up losing your frontline army and start getting chased down. Scarlet will hold on for another day. But four bases slowly, uh, no, quickly, sorry, opposite of slowly, quickly making its way over to a fifth on the gold and rich Vespian sixth, the lickety split two. Special does have a bit of a bank and maybe needs to add on an eighth factory. There's a reason he has seven though, and you can see the gas is almost perfect on that. Also rebuilding Ravens though too. Second armory's on the way. That's one thing that Special did not get particularly quick to, is upgrades. And now getting plus two, continuing to reinforce on this middle position. Scarlet, though, might have a little bit more than Special is expecting. Like, she is almost maxed out again. Little supply block, unfortunately. And if you reinforce like this as a mech player, under the assumption that you're winning the game, then you are putting yourself into the danger zone of getting overwhelmed and then immediately counterattacked. Because that's really one of the only reasons that a, term, a mech player, sorry, would be reinforcing like this is because they're pretty sure they're just winning. Otherwise, there's a little bit more of the... Certainly leaving the tanks at home and waiting until you're at 180 supply or even maxed out. Letting the cyclones just do the, the frontline work and harass and beep bop, as I like to say. That's a little sketch. Eight mutas are on the way, which seems a little funky. They will not help against the cyclone force on the front, but since there's no missile turrets, they are going to get damage on the SCB line, and Scarlet might just be bringing herself back into this. Some, uh... The, the, the very... The, the 90 degree turn that just suddenly came out of nowhere has... not tipped her car over. It has not gone plummeting into the ravine. I still say it's not an ideal scenario for the Zerg, but this is getting even better. Tanks on Siege, Fungals and Prosa Bile getting the Wombo combo, but that's not enough. Special's on Siege tanks still managing to get that to be a little bit of a trade. As you can see, resources difference not too different. Special finally starting to get harassed on his side of the map. I mean, that's one. That's like the biggest thing about this game is that Special has been able to play his game almost entirely, including how fast he was macroing matching the Zerg player on bases almost. That's been the real kicker. But now the SCVs have gone down on the gold and the Rich Vespian Geyser once again rallying forward to the mech player is turning a little sour as Scarlet of course reinforces faster as the Zerg player do. But also one who is on their side of the map. More SCVs going down as the missile turret is still not built and Cyclones only now getting back home to respond. But these mutas have been worth it. 22 SCV kills. The missile turret's built. The Cyclones pulling back, giving more room to Scarlet's attack, although this is hardly an attack. I don't know about this one. Now it's Scarlet's turn to not recognize just how powerful production lineup Special had. Special did build an 8th factory, by the way. So that has helped balance things out. You know, he did grab more bases, so... That is a very powerful, very quick reinforcing Terran if they are producing Cyclones. But look at the supply. Look at the supply! The supply! Special did take a lot of damage. Both in the economy, as well as in the rallying and losing very expensive, still overall slow building mech when you produce the tanks anyway. And I think Scarlet has run away with this game. Uh, kind of a bummer though. I mean... <laughs> like, 
I, I think both players make it through to Katowice. It'd be spectacular. Scarlet's more of a fan favorite in general, but Special is, is such a fun player to watch. And so I was kind of hoping for this to go into at least a 1-1 one -one scenario. And once again, Special had this really great idea, this this great theory craft and, and build and pace, but somehow, some way, tripping at the finish line does seem to be what, what gets Special more often than not. It's like so much of the game can be beautiful in the in the mind of it, in the execution of it, and then the last 10% just goes the way of his opponent. And of course, all kudos to Scarlet, who uh, managed to make this happen, but... Yeah, kind of a bummer. The mass Muta play here coming out now. Ooh! 20 Mutas against 13 Cyclones and 6 Ravens, by the way. That's quite a few. I wonder if consistent Raven production was really the ticket. <laughs> I don't know. Anti-Armor Missile on the Mutas makes this uh, kind of comical. The Cyclones should rip and shred. Oh god, yes. Oh Jesus. Oh my lord, baby Jesus. That was 3-1 Cyclone versus 2-1 Muta. Well, sorry, two... Uh, that was two attack Muta minus two armor Muta or whatever, so... Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The Mutas that did survive are throwing the little glaive worms at the Splat Depots. The supplies have been up too, by the way. Special did still have some very consistent mining. Reduced as he was on the SCVs, still had a lot. And so, there uh, is definitely a chance for Special to still win this game, so I'm not all woeful quite yet. Scarlet is on the back foot, but she does have bases, she does have some technology, and that technology right now that it's rearing its head is not the Mass Muta swap, no, it is the Broodlord swap. This got her a victory versus Gumiho when she desperately needed one. Now might do so here. We get the 2-0 start. As I don't believe Special realizes they're on the way. If he did, I believe that would be Thor's on the production tab, not more Cyclones. It's a gamble to hope that Cyclones do the trick against Broodlords. With the way that Broodlings mess up their micro and get the tanks friendly firing, it's very dangerous. But Scarlet can't be Cavalier with them, just to be super clear. Can't just YOLO, but I guess with the Banelings and Lings coming in too, kind of YOLO she can. Doesn't even have to use the Ravager. She realizes that. Just lets the Broodlords do their thing. And now there are three Thors on the way. But Scarlet has re regained control over the middle of the map. Is going to be building up her own bank. And is once again getting some Ling run buys going. These are Cracklings. So I'm trying to plus three with the duo of Adrenal Glands. But at the same time, Cyclones also grabbing a hatchery. I thought the drones are going to pull in to try and help against that. They did not. Scarlet now needing a, this little attack. It looks little, but it is fearsome. To do a lot of damage, which still has the potential. That's only one Thor here. Five more Thors on the way. A Viking to help out. Here we go. It's going to eventually pick away. That's two bases down, by the way, for both players. Special loses a 6 o'clock. Scarlet loses her 12. Another base could go down, but at the same time, I guess the army of the Zerg could go down. I don't know if it's enough Thors. The Broodlords just need to kind of stack up on a little bit. But here come more Thors, and that is absolutely enough. And Thors are really all that Scarlet has on this particular front line. In fact, she has a supply, but I can't really tell you where. <laughs> the Corruptor is trying to pee on the building. will be unsuccessful. Scarlet trying to reinforce now. As Roaches and Ravagers elsewhere. I'm just not sure. There they are. Lings did the job of killing that base, which is great, but can't find anything more. They absolutely could. It's just that they've just been F2'd. There was never a battle cruiser because he canceled the fusion core. This chat's a little confused. Scarlet might have a lot of mining, but does she have the technology? Not so much anymore. With Thor's out and decently upgraded at that, you're either going to want a significant amount of brood lords, or you're going to want some spells on your side. So Narrow Parasite is the spell to go for against Thor's, but then also even Blinding Clouds and Abducts would be helpful. Good old Ling Ravager is going to try and break through here. Is it going to be good enough? 3 1 for the Ravagers is not looking all that fantastic. Although the mech army is on similar upgrades, it's just the quality of mech, isn't it? Neural Parasite over halfway done now, but still not finished. Corruptor's once again peeing on an orbital, trying to at least cost the repair money. Special taken down at 6 o'clock of Scarlet. And now, Scarlet, what is the plan? More Roach is on the way. It's not so much a perfect plan as it is a desperate plan, but maybe it can work. Corrosive Bile still getting some shots off every now and again. And Scarlet is desperately trying to hold against the mech push. Special is running low on units, and that is when mech starts to crumble. It's got to have a critical mass of units to really work out. 
and Special just wasn't reinforcing, caught up with some harassment back at home, and also, frankly, caught up with his own limited bank. The four bases that were mining consistently throughout the loss of the SCVs are now out of minerals, out of gas, and he really needed this extra base up and running because the gold, of course, also runs out very, very quickly. So both of them having a bank problem, but Scarlet reestablishing more mineral mining faster. Also, once again, catching reinforcements, and that is the ticket. Special doesn't have the critical mass. He doesn't have the correct composition. He doesn't have the unit set up like they would want to be. Tank siege with cyclones on the front. The Ravagers tearing them down, even as they do get sieged up. Special now on the back foot. Things have been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But perhaps, finally, Scarlet will, in fact, get the 2-0. And I can go back to being kind of sad. I really thought Special had a chance with the whole theory of the game. Then he had a chance bringing it back with his own maxed out composition. But it seems like things are going Scarlet's way. As Special cannot, for the life of him, get enough of an economy. Mule's desperately being dropped in the 6 o'clock, but no additional gases as all of his become defunct. One Banshee comes out, which I freaking love. But that could actually be Neuroparasited? No, a tank's protecting it. I mean, I love it. I freaking love it. That is so helpful. Four SCVs go down, but both of them still on 66. Basically enough to produce enough Cyclones, enough for Scarlet to remax on her Ravagers. Well, not remax, but rebuild. And I think, just frankly, the composition of Scarlet has a lot of potential. Ravagers plus Spellcasters. It's a fantastic duo. I think it would struggle. Oh, Jesus. I think she's going to get slaughtered. Uh, mech defensively well set up can deal with this, 100%. There is a significant supply gap it could even be at and still deal with this type of army. But that, again, that, that situation has to be a perfectly layered mech army with tanks siege up, which is just not happening. We're still very cyclone based, so the fungal is still problematic. And the Ravager is actually just in the numbers that they have still beat out the cyclones. So Special wanted to get a little bit of a surround there, but I think his eyes were bigger than his stomach as he is once again forced to back away, trying to get some Hellbats on the front line too. And Hellbats should not be scoffed at. They are fodder. They're, they're significant body blocks sometimes. Whoopsie, baby. But in this case, they can not uh, They can hardly even be produced. Special is that low on cash. They also would be great for some run buys, but we just haven't had that. A couple of Cyclones try, but are also cleaned up. And it's looking grimmer and grimmer for the mech player. Special will not be able to get another Remax in this game. That seems for certain. Another tank goes down. Orbital could burn. And once again, Special might just be using this time, of which he probably knows that he is dead, to think out how to play the next game. For what could be the final game of the night, in the top left of Golden Aura, it is Scarlet. On the bottom right, we have Special. Special... As I had lamented in the last game, but then almost had to eat my words and then went back to it. I think the plan was great. Uh, you know, it wasn't the true Mastercraft plan, I suppose, because his actual plan was cut short. But nonetheless, <laughs> the situation he found himself in was Scarlet reacting to a battlecruiser rush that actually wasn't on the way. It's a really good idea. You know, anyone would take that idea. They would, they'd love, they would love it. They would do well with it. But even though he did well with it, primarily being able to expand as fast as he did and get such a good tempo going for a Terran player, did not end up winning the game. And that, that does seem to be what happens to Special a lot of the time. A lot of the other times, it's his plan from start to finish going perfectly. But then it becomes more of an execution game. It's less about the first five minutes where it's all the very minute reads and whatnot, and then it gets into the execution, and then he still ends up losing out. But either way, whether it's an almost accidental <laughs> significant uh, mind game or a purposeful one, Special hasn't been able to get all of the victories that he really could. The, the amount of games that I can think of where Special should have won the game in the series and should have been at top eights, top fours, top twos. is kind of endless. Going back even to his best performance of his career, which was getting to the quarterfinals, uh, semifinals, sorry. The round of four of BlizzCon back in 2017. But yeah, it just kind of makes me sad. I like seeing the, the brain. 
And then I want to see it work more often than it has. Maybe this time we'll actually get to get the uh, fusion core undetected and that'll work out better. We'll see. On the positive side, Scarlet managed to make it look all Gucci. Like, no problem. I definitely wasn't confused. I definitely didn't think the battle cruiser was all in the way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's good for her. Able to strike when the iron's hot as well, win some of the back and forth wars, and maybe it took a little bit of advantage of specials, perhaps overconfidence. Like I had said, and I think I think it is true. Past the heat of the moment. A lot of times when let's say tank mech primarily. That's you know, cyclo mech is different. When tank mech, when tanks or Thors are reinforcing they're the Steady push, the ant trail on the minimap. That's usually because a Terran player is pretty sure they're going to win. <laughs> like, they're already winning and they're like, let's just get it over with. Or they are very astute that their push is going to work if only a couple more tanks can join in. But it, it's extremely. Gant, like, gameplay is not the right word, but it's an extremely risky thing to do to reinforce like that with mech, with tanks. And I honestly do believe that is one of the reasons that Special lost control over the game. Almost brought it back and then lost control of it again in the back and forth and difficult to read games that that one did become. You know, how much do they have as a bank? How much do I have as a bank? Oh shit, did I actually saturate my gases? Do I have enough production? Do I have the right composition? Am I taking the right positions? It's hard, obviously. Fusion Quarry is on the way, by the way, guys. This time, not scouted! Hey! Get back talking about battle cruisers, and like I was trying to say in the last game, there's a definitely a chance when it's so out of meta that you just simply shock your opponent. They literally get almost a physical reaction from going, "Oh shit, oh, that's a thing." But that is now kind of gone because Scarlet did have that in the last game, didn't end up losing her the game, and now it's on her brain. If it hadn't been. Now she's like, oh, this guy can do a battle cruiser opener. That's right. Okay, I need to be wary of that. And that's exactly what she is. She's wary of it. She's built three spore crawlers. She sees that it's kind of a, a, a more classic opener, too. Because I gotta say, actually, the amount of two base one one ones is really low nowadays. I do it all the time because I basically have a build from 2015 and I haven't changed since then. <laughs> but it, it, amongst the pros, we got the forward two racks, we got the forward one racks, we got the proxy racks, we got the triple CC a lot more times. And yeah, that's a, that, yeah, exactly. Or if it is like a one, 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 it, do, it maybe is some of these uh, like medevac drops, I guess, but it's, it's really not common anymore. So seeing that third CC being built on the front, obviously she knows it's a one, 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 if it is a 1-1-1, one, 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 it could be Banshees, it could be a Battle Cruiser. And it is a Battle Cruiser, so the Spork Brawlers were always a wise idea. The Battle Cruiser does just teleport on over, that's what it does best. Queens are in the main, ready to go. Overlord sacrificed for the greater good, and now the Battle Cruiser is awfully injured. Not liking that, but should be able to escape. And that is the most important thing. Battlecruiser number one gonna survive. Battlecruiser number two is on the way. Back when battlecruisers were very much in the meta, it was almost 100% that if you went for multiple battlecruisers with Yamato, you were going mech. Special was certainly the odd man out on that one. So it was almost 100%. And continues to be, I would say, if we ever see battlecruiser openers. So we have multiple battlecruisers with Yamato and... It is bio, not mech. Which hopefully Scarlet remembers, basically. You know that. Oh, right, this guy doesn't just go into mech after two in Yamato. She does have Nudas on the way. So the Spire being built to handle uh, the X amount of battle cruisers, now determined to be two at the very least. Makes sense. Absolutely something that you want and kind of need, otherwise the multiple battle cruisers can run around and do a tremendous amount of damage. But then you would usually see corruptors taking direct fights. No, this time around it is mutas. Mutas that might try and bypass the battle cruisers to get some damage done to Special's economy. 
They are found out, however, if Special was paying attention. Was he paying attention? I do not see any missile turrets, so I'm not sure that he was. He might have thought that was a Ling or a Queen or something. And now Scarlet gets some damage on the third command center. Marines are quick to respond, so the mutas won't dominate here. But Scarlet using them to control a little bit of the other side of the map, a little bit of scouting, a little bit of harassment. Well, her actual plan is to go into Ling, Bane, Ling, Roach, Ravager. So I do think she kind of maybe split her technology all, all different directions, like everything that she could get under the sun, because she might have been past tense, a little unsure if it was mech or bio, but she's been aware of bio for a while. I'm not sure exactly when. So anyway, you know, maybe Ling, Bane, Ling, Pure could have been fine. Ling, Bane, Ling, Roach, Ravager is also totally fine. And actually, she is getting six more mutas. So she's going to have 14 of them with plus one flyer. That does a lot of damage, especially trying to get a move out here. Ravagers are not made. Bailings are not made. It's a little scary, but then Special sees, I guess, any opposition whatsoever and decides this is not worth it. Doesn't know for a fact that there is an opportunity to attack. And even though there was a brief one, it probably would have been brief. Scarlet was maxing out, having gotten her 90 drone economy for a while, was building Banelings and was getting set up to handle that attack, so. Could he have rushed in and maybe killed a couple of queens with the marines? Yes. Could he have planted the tanks and taken a direct fight? Probably not. So Special, wisely moving back. He is at a army disadvantage, but that is also the Roach Ravager inflating supply. Baneling speed was significantly later than a lot of other builds with mutas, so <laughs> that's nowhere near completion. The mutas themselves still doing a great job distracting, however, just pulled most of the marines away. Scarlet is going to find a limited number of reinforcements, easy peasy to take care of, including getting into the natural and infiltrating the main base perhaps as well. Special, he had a fine army, actually. If everything was combined together, the layering was good, the army was fine. But Scarlet being able to infiltrate these bases, kill the tanks, kill the engineering base, get into the main base, and kill the SCVs as well is the damage that she was hoping to find. Two battle cruisers managed to get some counter damage done, but only a little bit. One even even going down. And I think Scarlet's gonna be pretty happy with how that just went down. Special is on three bases, sub 50 workers. And uh, if he does go across the map, he will be positioning himself onto creep. So it's uh you can't rush it. If there is a gap of time, which the Zerg player is currently remaxing and rebuilding, you only have 10 seconds or less to actually abuse that. And you don't want to rush into things on creep, because that's uh, when you rush into the bailings, isn't it? And of what happened here, Special managed to get a little bit off of creep, but this is done, guys. Scarlet is going to make it to Katowice, and Special will unfortunately be denied yet again here in another qualifier. GG's. Scarlet with a 3-0, moves into Katowice, and will be joined by many, many players, but specifically from today, she'll be joined by Gumiho and Bunny. The other match is currently Trigger 2-0 up against Cham, so she will probably be joined by Trigger as well. And that's going to be it, guys. That is it. The players for I Am Katowice have officially been settled, almost officially because it's Trigger Tram. So the player list will be 